up above my head, I hear music. I don't only hear music, I hear sweet music in the air. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. And at this time, amen, I'm going to turn this part of the service into the hands of a capable man, our assistant pastor, Elder Norman Williams. Let's greet him in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you today, sir. Praise the Lord to the Facebook audience. Praise the Lord to what's here present in the Holy Temple 519 South Church. Yes, above my head, I hear music in there. It got to be a God somewhere who sent the sun shine and he sent us the rain. Amazing grace, how sweet. Salvation. 
For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. But there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, but the same Lord over all is rich all come to him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. And then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed in. Yes. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Mm -hmm. And how shall they preach except they be sung? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings, bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed thy report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing thy the word of God. Yeah. I'd like to take from a thought this morning, and it comes from right here in verse 13. Whosoever Call upon the Lord shall be saved. That is why Captain, all you got to do is call. And he said, What? You shall. He said, I'll think about it. I will, will consider it. But he said, You shall be saved. I'm going to tell you about an incident that happened to me when I was a boy. I think I was about 10 years old, and this girl was about six. Well, where I grew up at, people were real superstitious. I imagine some of you older ones heard this when you was growing up. They said, if somebody sweep your foot with a broom, you're going to go to jail. Yep. So this young girl was sweeping the floor. And she swept my foot. I said, girl, don't you sweep my foot with that broom? I said, I don't want to go to jail. So she said something small about I can't tell them. They're so ugly from the floor. Mm -hmm. That's she said. And, and when she, I said, what you said? And when I started up on her, she took the broom like this and went, Paul and Silas did in jail. 
They began to call on the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And their shackles began to shake. They used to break loose and they were free. Peter and them began to sing praises and call on the Lord. And he saw an angel down and opened the door. And God will remind us what he said in Colossians 3.25. He is no respecter of person. Once again, whosoever just call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Uh -huh. And into the, 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 the subject, the, the, the lesson, this, the scripture this morning, Romans the 10th chapter, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, and thou shalt be saved. Now, God want to point out to us this morning, I'm talking about to myself and everyone that listens. It's a not a difference, it's a big difference with confessing that it is repeated after somebody. You know, he didn't say if, the, if, if whoever is in charge of the service called you up there, and say, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, bring your heart to the dead. Then you're not confessing it, you're repeating what somebody told you. And just like 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 3, says, no man can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and is the Son of God without the Holy Spirit. And once again, all you, all the way you get the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know, just like James 4 and 2 say, he said we have not because we ask not. That's the, Lord, teach me how to call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. Lord, teach me how to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And how it helps me to believe in my heart that you bring that. Lord, and Jesus told us how to do it, but gave us an example of it. In Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning verse 23, Jesus told our father who came down to him to pray for his son. He said, all things are possible to believe. But when we got a doubt in our mind, we got to, we got to let Jesus know. I mean, he, well, he already know, but if we'll just confess it, he said he's faithful and just to forgive us in the first of John chapter number five. And he'll cleanse us of that. That's right. You know, just like the Father said in Mark 9, 24. He said, Lord, I do believe. Mm -hmm. Help thy my unbelief. Lord, I believe you're going to take me through this. Lord, I believe you ain't going to let me be tempted beyond that when I'm able to back. Shepherd, he, he, he uh, the, the shepherd would keep it the sheep. He said, let's sit and get him. 
And the Lord said, this, the one right here. And he told Samuel, when Samuel seen the chaotic and didn't believe, he said in 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verse 7, look not at his compass and his right. height, because I refuse them. He said, man, look at the outward appearance, but God look at the heart. So that's why we got to ask God, like David said in our 51st Psalm, verse 10, to please God, create in me. We can't worry about the husband, the wife, the children, the boss, a law enforcement, whatever. We got to get our heart right. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Put the right spirit in me. Then when I teach transgressors, I wave and sit for We cannot, if we don't have the Holy Spirit, we'll never confess with our mouth. The Lord Jesus, and believe in our heart that God has been in the Because like you said right here in verse 10, but with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession are made unto salvation. Yeah. And you ain't truly confessing is like some churches do. I don't know who they are, but the overseer called up anybody who wants to become a member of the church. And they say, okay, we're well, going be like to me. They confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And, and, and if you say, I believe my heart is that well, you're not confessing. You were said to remind me when you go there to be a listener to the military. Everybody raised their hand, they repeat what the uh, instruction the Lord said that, you know, uh, 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 these, these are common things, but for the weapons of our warfare, uh -huh. like he told us in Second Corinthians 10 and 3, is not common. But they're spiritual, mighty to put it out of the wrong home. So we got to, we got to, we got to, just, you, you can't be, you can't uh, uh, walk in the, the body of Christ. You got to be born in oh. So you got to be, you, you got to be a, a, a born in, 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 the, in, in the body of Christ. Like he said, that what a, a, a flesh is flesh, and that what the spirit is the spirit, as St. John said, chapter 6. So we got to ask God, Lord, help me to go back, like he told his disciples in Jerusalem, in, in, in Acts, the first chapter, verse 4, and say, wait until the terror there, and wait till I send the come. Right. Which I was saying in my name. No, we're going to have to tell it. It's just like you say, don't, in, 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 in Rebecca, the third chapter, verse 4, don't inherit, you know, wait, because he's he going to surely come. Uh -huh. and not going to tell it. And, and when we're there tearing and calling on the Lord to set us free from our flesh and to help us divide him and his word by him, like Hebrews. The 10th chapter, verse 35, says, Cast not away, therefore, thy confidence, which have a great recompense of reward. He said, We have need of patience. That's right. After we have done the will of God, he who has promised he will come and he won't tell. Mm -hmm. He might not come when we want, when we think we ought to be there, but he is always on time. Just like the mighty power of joy made a song out in the view of the 19th century. He is a own time God. So Lord, teach me how to tarry. Teach me how to pray. Teach me and help me to wait on you. Like you asked me to do in, in the, the 14th Psalm, verse 20, I mean, the, 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 the Psalm, the 27th chapter, verse 14. Help me to wait on you and be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Uh -huh. In verse 11, for the scripture says, Whosoever believe in him should not be ashamed. If you believe in the three, like I said, he's not going to let you be ashamed. He's not going to let us be tempted. Like he promised first Corinthians 13, but y'all that won't be as able in our temptation, he's going to make a way for us to escape. So don't let nothing separate from God. Paul asks us a question for whom? In Romans the 8th chapter, verse 35, he said, who should separate from God? Yeah. Should yeah. triumph? Should tribulation, should persecution, and should fame and anything. What the devil going to do, he's going to come there and try to make you embarrassed. Let's just make you ashamed. He's going to try to make you feel like a whip. Just like you is a little and smaller than a man. But we got this, uh, uh, it's the same like what Job said. In Job, the, 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 the first, the first the Job, the 14th chapter, verse 14. I'm going to wait till my change comes. Yes, yes. 
We got to say like Job said, whatever we going through with, whatever pain, whatever affliction we going through, like Job said in Job the 13th chapter, verse 15, don't he slay me. Yeah. Yet will I trust him. That's right. He's just like Job said in Job the first chapter, verse 21. He said, God did it. And God took it away. He said, bless him. Irregardless how much pain I did, how much wife don't let me touch it no more, but husband won't let me touch it no more, but children ignore me, you know, and everything. Whatever I'm going through, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Right. We said, Lord, help me to hold on just a little while longer. Because I know, like Job said in Job the 19th chapter, I know my redeemer did it. And that he's a stand upon this earth in the last day. Oh, yeah. And don't no one destroy my body. Yet Hallelujah. in my flesh Hallelujah. shall I see the Lord. Oh, we ask God, help me, dear God, to don't fail on you. Help me to hold on to your unchanging hand. Lord, I need you. That's why Jesus said, come unto me. You know, God, what you got, just keep calling on the name of the Lord. I don't care how long you have to call, just keep it calling. You might have to do like the man up at, in, 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 in the pool of Bethesda in, in, in St. John, the fifth chapter, verse 7. You might have to be out there 38 years. But it doesn't matter. Coach, like I said, cast not away there for your company. Well, God, if he came, he came with a great picture of water. Jesus came there and said, well, thou be made whole. He said, every time I try to step down into the water, Somebody stepped down before me. But he said, well, I be made whole. Jesus showed us one day, you might not have to go to the water. One day the water is going to come to you. Oh, yeah. And he said, take up that day oh, and walk. But he stayed there. Everybody, you know, he said, he came down and choked the water every season. As far as I know, it is four seasons in a year. Mm -hmm. So four times a year, for, for, for 38 uh, uh, years, he always sees somebody else. Get down there before him. But he said to me, he said the same thing Job said, I'm going to wait till my change comes. What Job said in Job 14, chapter verse 14. And that's what the Lord said, we've got to wait on him. Be of good courage. He was going to wait, I said on the Lord. And Isaiah told us what happened to those that wait on the Lord. In Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verse 31, he said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you're going to ride on the wings of the eagle, you're going to run and not be with you. You're walking, not going to pay. And that's what this man did. He stayed there and waited on the Lord. We got to keep on calling on the name of the Lord. Look, and it's going to seem like the more you call on him, look like the worse of things get. Because this is what happened to me when I was strung out there on crack cocaine. Sometimes the more I call on the Lord, like the more I pray, look like I missed up more money and woke up broken than I did. The times I didn't call. You know, but I just kept on calling on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the most high. Oh, yeah. yeah. And one day, June the 4th, to my surprise, hallelujah, the devil is on a trap to kill, to steal, and destroy me. And Jesus come by there. And I asked him, I said, Lord, why? Why am I just burning up my money? Because like I was so hurt, okay. so disgusting, burning up three or four waking up on, on, on Sunday morning, and then came to buy a triple crab a print. And a voice spoke in my ear oh, my, my. and said, you got a demon in you. And then when he said that, I could feel that demon moving around up my hand. And I said, Lord, where? Where can I go? To get it? But all this time, I thank God for my late pastor, Apostle Henry Ross. He used to always have off the call. He'd take up the call the name of the Lord. And, I, and I, you know, when I got broke or whatever, I kept calling on the name of the Lord. And just like Romans 5 and 8 said, don't worry because you're not dead in your sins. But just like Romans 5 and 8 said, but while we were yet in our sin, Christ still died for us. Yeah, Remember in, 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 in Acts the ninth chapter, Paul was on his way to the masters to, 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 to gather some saints and, and, and hook them for calling the name of the Lord. And while he was yet in his sin, God saved him. Paul. So the Lord, we know that Paul was one of the biggest murders ever been in this earth. And that's but when Jesus, just like 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 20, says, all the promises of God are yea and amen. And you know, in 2 Peter, 
the, uh, uh, the, the third chapter, verse uh, uh, nine, he said, God not slight concerning his promise. So it, the, the Lord promised us that whosoever should call his name, he said, he's going to be sent to you. And, and, and so irregardless of how dirty you think you is, and which all of us, just like Isaiah 64 and 6 said, we all ain't nothing but unclean things. All our righteousness ain't never filthy right. Don't let no devil in hell stop hitting you from coming Hallelujah. to the Lord. Because just like Galatians 5 and 7 say, you did run away. But who hit you? You know who hit us? S E L L self. We can't let nothing. Paul said, we can't let nothing from the Lord of God. Don't let trials, tribulation, persecution, pain, negative, peril, destroy. We got to be persuaded. I am, you know, I am persuaded. We got to be persuaded. Don't let life not get through the Lord of God. We got to keep on calling. I kept on calling and calling and calling, and the Lord told me to go down to refuge and let Bishop Ross cast that image down the way. Brothers and sisters, listen to this. This been over 34 years ago that Jesus sought me free. But Jesus wanted to know when he set you free, like he said in St. John, the eighth chapter, verse 32, who the Son of Man set free mm -hmm. is free indeed and never be taken in bondage again. That's why we, we got to come down though. Don't care yeah. how dirty you is, how what 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 your condition is. That I went to the church June the fourth night. I was nasty, I was dirty, I was stinking, and uh, if Apostle Ross that had been too long built that church, and the average pastor who had a clean pews and stuff wouldn't let wouldn't let me in there. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 uh, 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 but 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 by the grace of God, Apostle Ross let me in his church and everything. He cast that demon out there. In my life ain't been the same. But I, I was I was down at the altar, calling on the name of the Lord, and Apostle Ross come by and he said, You demon, I command you. Hallelujah! To the most high God. In the name of Jesus, I'm losing. Yeah, yeah. I have been trying to be saved ever since 1972, and this was 1989. Long as I was down there tearing, and the organ was loud, the drums were loud, the sex was Saying it all, come against the song now. I would say, Jesus, 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 now. Oh, yeah. But Hallelujah. when the altar, when the organ dropped down, the drum beat dropped down, my voice dropped down. Mm -hmm. I was just with Jesus. But this particular day, I had others say, I suddenly came over me. Yeah. I heard that yeah. for 17 years. And I can't explain it. And I didn't have no control of myself when I experienced that June the 4th. Somehow, Hallelujah! came over me. And I had no choice but to say, Jesus, Jesus, I began to praise the Lord from the rise. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I used to go to work and eat that time we talked about you, but I couldn't talk, I couldn't help but think the miracle that Christ Jesus had done to me. So, whatever you're going through, man, it might, it took about three years. But whatever you're going through with, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Just like that girl said, Mama! I dropped that privilege. When you say, Jesus! She, the Lord told me that's what the devil do. He might come to capture you, but when you holler, Jesus! He's going to drop that broom. He's going to drop what he's doing. He got to go. Because just like the Lord said, you know, a, a draw now to God. When he said in James, James 4 and 7, resist the devil mm -hmm. and he'll be from you. And draw now to God to draw to you. You say, I don't know how. Just like James 4, we have to ask God to teach you how to draw down. Oh, yeah. Lord, teach me how to call on your name when I'm in trouble. Lord, teach me how to resist the devil and the people. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just that uh, 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 Jesus said in, in Luke, excuse me, in St. John, in 6, chapter 7, he said, him that comes to me, I will know it can't come out. It don't matter about what you have been through, what you have did. Because his promise are yea and amen. And just like he promised us in Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse 31 and 32, he said, all sins are being given to man. Even speaking a word against the Son of Man. But it's separate for the Holy Spirit. And the Lord wants us to know if you blaspheme, you're going to know what you're doing. It ain't just something you accidentally say that come out of your mouth. Even when the Lord wants us to remind us, it's a big difference between speaking a word against the Son of Man and blaspheming. Mm -hmm. Because you look to say somebody devil, that's the Lord said, that's not blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. But you ain't cursed. 
You just your opinion about that, that this not from God. And God said he don't hold it against you. Because he said in, 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 in Luke the 12th chapter, verse 47, he who know the way and don't do it, gonna be whooped with a mini scratch. But he said in Luke 12, but he who don't know the way and don't do it with a few scratch. So if he put you in hell, that's the administrator. The Lord ain't gonna hold that issue something you don't know. Just you're gonna get a whoop. You're gonna be whooped with a few scraps. He's not gonna whoop you with many scraps because something you said you didn't know. Because just like Jose 4 and 6 say, my people's perish because of the lack of knowledge. You lack of knowledge that this is God and what God said, I won't hold that issue. But if you did just like what Job wife told Job in Job the second chapter, verse 9, but that's what the devil gonna tell you to do. He's going to tell you to cuss the Holy Spirit that's dying coming in for him. So if you do that now, then you know what you're doing. And like the Lord say, you know, there'll be no more permission for your sin once you do that. He said, won't be forgiven in this world? No, in the world to come. In verse 11, for the scripture says, whosoever believes on him should not be ashamed. Verse 12, but there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. It don't matter whether you're rich, poor, Black, white, it don't matter about your ethnic, what you come out of. It ain't no difference with, with, with God. Like he said, for the same Lord over all is rich upon all. So then what the Lord said, brothers and sisters, don't let no demon out of hell. I don't care if you done said something you shouldn't have said, you done did something you shouldn't have did, mm -hmm. or you done went about things the wrong way. The Lord said, just call on the name of the Lord. And then do like the part of the son did. Just come on back home. Come like he said, him come down with no cast in my Father, I sinned against heaven. I sinned with thee. Lord, I said to my wife, I shouldn't have said. Lord, I said to my husband, I shouldn't have said. Lord, I thought the wrong thing about that police officer that died. What 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 what, what, what beautifully be a suspect he shouldn't be. Lord, the one that addressed it, my wife, my mother, my father, I said the wrong thing. Lord, I had the wrong thing. The Lord wanna mind us too wrong to make a right. Right. The Lord wants us to know that we is not to get the vision of a no circumstance. Don't say what Adam said, husbands. That woman you gave me, she gave me. If that woman would have talked to me, and why I don't say the state made me do it. And we definitely can't say what Will what, what Wilson used to say. The devil made you do it. Well, the devil can't make you do nothing. He can tempt you. That's what he come to do. He come to tempt you. But the devil cannot put God. He's not gonna let you put the devil put a bridle around of you like he do a mule. And when he tell you, turn you to the left, you got to go. Or turn you to the right, you got to go. He said, halt, you got to stop. Only thing he do is, 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 is come there and tempt you. Because just like James, the first chapter, verse thirteen, say, "Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God." For he said, "God tempted no man." God cannot be tempted even if he tempts any of them. He said every man is tempted when he's drawn away in his own lust. And when lust is conceived, lust conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is conceived, it brings forth death. Brothers and sisters, don't let, no, don't let nobody see the main philosophy. The wages of sin is death, no matter how. how is it marriage, God, or property? So don't, don't, don't accuse somebody else when you're tempted. Just confess that you done did wrong. And Jesus said, I am faithful. I am just, I will forgive you through all right. And right now, I'm going to take a second. Whosoever, all you have to do, call on Jesus. Don't care what kind of condition you're in. If you might be like me, strung out on crack cocaine, I'm bugging you know, a lot of times. I didn't make a call on the Lord, I was broke. And all my friends don't walk away from me. They don't hope smoke up the money, drink up the money. Now they don't want nothing to do with it. Just like the part of the sun. In, anybody out there with crack cocaine using the hall pit, you find yourself in the hall pit. Yeah. You desire to hush that. You get hungry, but you don't buy nothing to eat. I desire to hush that pelvis the whole thing. I know where the fuck the soul is coming from. But I desire to grow like that that some people throw away out there in the church. Yeah. Yeah. But my pride won't let me go ask for it. Uh -huh. I just was wishing that one day I'd get off the shelf. Well, hoping oh, yeah. that they would come over to me. Yeah. Say what you want. And sometimes they did, but most times. I guess some people like me, they think, well, I have been eating off this. I don't want to ask nobody if they want and everything. And I, I you know, it, it wasn't nobody but the Lord could take my tongue from asking them what they had to eat. Uh -huh. And so, I, but, 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 but the Lord had to let us get in the hall pit sometimes, saying, sometimes. in order for us to come back home, if the 
I was sure would have gotten a hall pay that would have came back home. If he'd have had friends to give him food and give him the things that he needed and stuff, he never would have come back home. So sometimes God has to let us go, get in the hall pen, and then when we come to ourselves, then we come back home. Because just like old folks say, saints, you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. But you let him run out in the wilderness long enough, you ain't got to take him to the water. When a horse gets thirsty enough, he's going to look for water. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord has to make me get thirsty to want to get away from the pack. The Lord had to let me suck on the crack pipe like the baby sucked on the milk bottle milk bottle till you get sick of it. And then you don't if you take it just like you take the bottle from the baby and he ain't sick of it, he's gonna cry. And that's like the Lord knows I took that crack pipe out of your mouth, Brother William, when you wasn't sick of it, you gonna want it to bite. But the Lord let me out and he knows. To save the ungodly. The Lord let know how to, to, to wear me out. I can let me get sick of that crack and I don't want to drink, I don't want to smoke it no more. They're like your baby just sit a second on that bar and I don't want to suck it no more. Yeah. So that's why Jesus said in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast them all thy cares upon him and all care for him. When you got a son or daughter is so disobedient, a son or daughter you can't talk to, you got to care of and put him in the hands of the Lord. And God got to come in the wilderness and let them wander around till they get thirsty for what's right. Then they come back home. Just like the prophet the son, he had to go out there and get thirsty for what's right. And then the Lord brought him back home. And when he come back home, when he left there, he was the most distant, you know, uh, uh, uplifted one. But when he came back home, he was humble. Uh -huh. That's what we put the son in God's hand, the daughter, the husband, the wife, the boss man. Your boss man, God, would, 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 would take the hardest thing and make it the solvent. The hardest boss that you think you got, God will put him down on his knees and put he'll be the kindest one that you think the boss man you ever had. Just like the father of the son, when he came back home, he was the most kindest son that his father had and everything. But he did what was in the law. The Lord don't let that husband wonder out there in the wilderness. Did he get thirsty for water, sweet wife? Mm -hmm. And when God brings him back, he's going to be back. Like that one of the 22nd song, verse 1 said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. I'm glad to go back home to my wife. I'm glad to go back home to my husband. I'm glad to go back home to my, to, to, to my parents. I'm glad, you know, but sometimes, unfortunately, God might have to help me go, 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 go to prison before we, we realize how much he loved his, 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 his wife. And love his children sometimes and vice versa with the mother. Have to go to the prison. Before she comes to the knowledge, how much she don't want. So that's why when we pray, Father, never let's not without will. Sometimes we have to let God, you know, care about them and, 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 and honor them to bring them back home. And they'd be glad to come back home to their husband. Glad to come home to their wife, their children, stuff. But we got to say, Father, mm -hmm. never let's not will without will. We can't wish no evil before no one. We got to say, Father, help me to love them in spite of them. And I, and like Philippians 4, 13 says, we can do all things through Christ who give us the strength. And, 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 and like I said, verse 14, I'm getting ready to wind it up here. How then shall they call on him and whom they believe? If you don't believe it, you are gonna go. You know why that girl said, Mama, she had faith in her mama. She know when mama come there, whatever mama had to do to get me off of her, mama would use it. You know, when I was a boy, you don't see them too much now, you know, not too many, but, but chicken used to run through, through the neighborhood when I was a boy in the in city where I grew up in. Well, a chicken was the scariest thing. When a hen, just a hen by herself, you go up on her, she gonna run. But brother, when that rooster throws the eggs, she go lay them, she don't lay them in the open, she go find some place to hide them, try to hide them anyway. And she pile them up, and after she go there and sit there on them so long, and them eggs turn from eggs into bitters, you go up there and go mess with her chicks. She won't fight herself, but them chicks, you see a boy waiting up, and come there to run you away from her. Well, this is what, the Lord said, you don't need to come by the mama. A lot of things 
a mama might not mess with the husband by, about the children. But you let the boy do a thing to hurt their children. And anything they get their hands on, they'll use it. Because, you know, the, uh, 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 and that's why children believe in their mama. That's the first thing a child says when something frightens them. Mama! When that's all they say, Jesus! And just like I dropped that blue. And I went, Mama might have been in Tallahassee, might have been uh, in Russia, China somewhere. But just that name. And not the same with the devil, just that name, Jesus. Just like uh, 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 Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 12, say, Neither is there salvation in the other. There's no name you don't know say, but you, you say that there, the devil gonna let you alone. The devil got to flee. But you got to call it like you believe it. And you got to ask Jesus, most of all, how to call him his name that the devil will flee from him. Finishing up here uh, with uh, verse uh, 14. And he said, how many wounds they, if you don't believe me, you're not going to call them. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, let us define what a preacher is. A preacher gets somebody to claim the good news. It's not, you know, that's saying he's a minister, uh, a day elder, a district elder, a bishop, or an apostle. It, a, a preacher is somebody that's trying to claim the good news. That's all you do. And that's why Jesus said, you know, it, 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 it prophesied over 4,000 years ago through Joel, in Joel, the second chapter, verse 28. He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour up my spirit of hope space. He said, your son and daughter shall prophesy in my name. Yes. Young men should dream, dream, old men are going to see vision. So, you see, a woman can go out and be a preacher, which means just proclaim the good news of Christ.
go out uh, with some, we go on a date or, or to come to church, and we, we get in the mirror and make sure everything is just right. What we got to do in, in order to please God, we got to get in front of the mirror, yes. which is his word. And we got to ask God to dress us right, to get my heart right now, God. We got to stand before Jesus. And so like David said in that 51st Psalm, verse 17, Purge me with hyssop so that I'll be clean. Wash me so that I'll be washed. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear joy and gladness to the bone that don't be rejoice. Created me a clean heart and put Christ in me. And then we go out and teach church grace and, and, and sinners to come to repentance. Because Jesus said, Why? Me, you, or anybody, why we behold them all? And said, I thought of God. But we all sin, saints, and come to all the glory of God. But you don't have to stay in your sin. You can come now. Come now, like Isaiah 18 said, and read it with Jesus. Not with me, not with no man. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So I'm going to call right now everybody, every man that's in the sound of my voice, and every woman, every girl. Every boy, every man, let us come to Jesus. Because he said, we all, like sheep, go straight from time to time. He said, every one of us turn to our own way. And Jesus said, he has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. So let us come now and confess. With our, we ask Jesus to help us, rather, to confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. If your heart is raised from the dead, then we say, Lord, help us do this. Let us bow here. Dear, sweet Christ Jesus, our Lord, our beautiful Lord, and our beautiful Savior, our beautiful Redeemer, and our beautiful soon coming King and sacrificial Lamb. Father, we pray for every human being that's in this earth this evening, every man, every woman, every girl, every boy, human being, Lord, that you will purge us all the history and cleanse us that our heart will be right with you. Wash us with your blood, we'll be white as snow. I want to hear that we can hear what your spirit is saying to the church this evening. To serve our hearts, so this evening we hear your voice, part of our book. I want to hear that us all hear joy and gladness, the poor folks, we we'll rejoice. We want to pray that we all come together in your name, Jesus. Every last time you come here, dear God, let us come together in your name and let you hide your word in our heart, most in issue. Help all of us to honor ourselves to you and let you teach us and help us to pray together. Seek your face down together, that I may get from heaven, give us the name. Let there be no more schism, no more division among their God, no more division among the Methodists, the Baptists, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Catholics, their God, or oh, heavenly Father, the Nazis, the Bloods, the Crips, the Ku Klux Klan, their God, all the hate groups, their God, what the devil, them pop and blind in their mind with their God. We pray that your words like the shining of our life. Lord, all of us got some blindness in our, in our, in our pathway. Then we need you to shine your light in there, God. And strengthen all of us when we get torn down. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. So this time in only tip, we're going to have our Facebook audience uh, uh, spoke. So it's going to be done by the first lady of the church, but they bet you let's offer them with a hundred. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We thank and praise God for that word this morning. Um, when he called, amen. When, we, when he called, amen, when we call on the name of the Lord, amen, hallelujah, he will answer, amen, he will answer, that's what he said in his word, amen, we thank and praise God, L. William, for that word this morning, we thank and praise God for all of our guests for tuning in this morning with us, amen, hallelujah, and I just praise God for all of his many wonderful blessings, amen, we thank uh, Sister Diane Garrett, amen, for being in with us this morning, uh, my daughter Kendra Washington, amen, hallelujah, Brother Patricia Wright, amen, uh, Deacon John Matthews, amen, uh, Bubba Zacha, uh, Zachu, amen, for joining in with us this morning, and uh, Missionary Delores Griffin, amen, the, the International Sunday School Superintendent, now she's not in that position, but she's still uh, with big business, Sunday school is big business, and it is big business, saints, amen, hallelujah, so you can ask your questions, or what you want to know when we're in Sunday school, amen, a school of schools, 
Jesus. Amen. So thank you all for tuning in with us. Amen. And uh, prayerfully that we are see you when we tune in again, which is next Sunday. The Lord says the same. God bless you all. Amen. Have a great Sunday afternoon in Jesus' name. Back to you, Eleanor Williams. Praise the Lord once again, saints and friends. I hope the Lord spoke to all of us. The Lord speaking right to me, to all of our hearts. We all draw more close to Him and have more brotherly love. Like like Hebrews 13, chapter verse 1 says, that brotherly love, continue to love everybody. And don't draw back from the Lord. Yes. Oh, He's coming soon. He's us coming soon. And with joy we'll welcome his return. Oh, it may be dawn. Oh, it may be night or noon. But I know he's coming soon, Christ Jesus. Coming soon, Christ Jesus. Coming soon. And with joy we'll welcome his